Now that we've established the nature of charge from demonstration and historical notes, we will examine where this charge comes from. And for that, we'll have to briefly review the structure of the atom. All matter is made up of atoms, which have a central nucleus containing protons and neutrons that is surrounded by an electron cloud, whereby electrons are free to move about the empty space in the atom. Late 20th century physics shows how neutrons and protons are further made up of quarks, and electrons are basic point particles with no underlying structure. The atom is mostly empty space. If the hydrogen atom could be magnified and viewed as the size of a baseball, its electron would be four kilometers or two and a half miles away and would be the size of a period at the end of a sentence in a physics book. So the atom, and by extension everything, including us, is mostly empty space. Extending Ben Franklin's charge convention down to the level of the atom, we find that protons and electrons have equal in magnitude and opposite charges. The proton is positive and the electron is negative. This is the origin of the charge that shows up on the macroscopic level. That is, what we can see with our own eyes, like the ruler picking up the bits of paper. Neutrons are neutral. They have no charge, but they play an important role in holding the positively charged protons together. It's called the strong nuclear force, and this will be covered later in the course. Atoms are electrically neutral since they have equal numbers of protons and electrons so that their total charge adds up to zero. However, electrons can be gained or lost from an atom as you learned in chemistry. When an atom loses electrons, it now has more protons than electrons, and hence more positive charges than negative charges, so we call it a positive ion. When an atom gains electrons, it is now negatively charged, a negative ion. 